you go back many years, it was a game called Trivial Pursuit. It was a blue box original version, and there was a question there, what two things you need to go orient here? It's a map and a compass. So the sport evolved from map and compass games, but it's really a map game. And the map is, is the whole part of the game. And it's detailed map with lots of information on it. And we teach you how to read that map. And then your process is to locate certain sites around on the map that we circle for you. And to do it in order in the fastest time is the competitive part. But a good many of our members are non-competitive. They just come walk, hike. They get to keep the map at the end so they can, you know, try orienteering. They can come back out as long as the park is open. You know, they can come and just kind of walk around and see the map and stuff like that. So it makes hiking a little more interesting. Well, they, they get a little finger device now. In the old days of orienteering, it was a little pin punch and you had a little card that you took around. And as you went from site to site, if you were at the right place, you would punch your card and that told us you were there. Now we use a thing called an e-stick which sits on your finger and it records that you're there. And so the object is there are controls that are orange and white bags like this and on top of the control is a little box device and it records by putting the little thing on your finger into the hole it records you there. Some people actually have air cards which means they just need to get close enough they don't have to actually punch the device so it records. So in that when, when you put it in there um, it beeps and it flashes a light and so for me as a hearing person I put it in I hear the beep I know I've recorded that I've been there. For the deaf members in the club they put it in they see the flash of the light and they know they've been recorded so it records your time that you were there to the second and so then you go through the course the object is to find the different controls, which this is what these are called, orienteering controls, to find them in the order we tell you. And so each map, there are different levels of courses. So a beginner's course would be all trails. It might be six, seven controls, a kilometer and a half. And then as you build skills, it gets tougher and tougher until you're bushwhacking through the woods. And so there's like white is a beginner's course, yellow is advanced beginners, then you go to orange which is intermediate, and then you have brown, green, red, and blue which are all advanced levels. And that just says the course might be shorter, like a brown course for a 70 year old might be 4 kilometers and 80 meters a climb. But a blue course for a lead might be for a 21-year-old to a 30-year-old, and they might run 10K and have 500 meters to climb. So it's a sport you can do all at any age, really. And it's really your choice what you want. It's, you know, whether you want to get exercise just to come out and hike, or whether you really want to run and compete, um, it, it's really up to you what you want to do. I like being out in the woods. I like being outside. You know, we've seen the popularity during COVID of people being out in the outdoors. We've seen parks that were desolate for years now are full of people because they looked at saying, hey, I need to be kind of away from other people, but I like being outdoors, and so you see the parks there. I've always liked traveling to events. They have national events where you can go for two days, and usually in the evenings, they, on Saturday night, you would have a dinner, so you'd you know run into people. You get to know people, you know, from different parts of the United States or even the world. You know, we've orienteered overseas on the French-German border. Um, club members have gone to Scotland for five days of orienteering. There's the, the sport is huge overseas. We've had students um, come to live for. A year to go to school with us mm -hmm. and we only take them if they ask to be with an orienteering family so we've had you know some years ago we had for four straight years um, guys and girls from different parts of the world come live with us for a year go to school but then go orienteering with us. Delaware Valley orienteering um, was three trail clubs in the 60s that tried orienteering and so they formed a club and became an association, but then the people who really were doing it liked it so much, they made it a, a club in itself. So they stopped being in the hiking club or did little with the hiking club and started doing orienteering. And that was in 1967. 
when it first got organized. Uh, we are the oldest civilian club in the U.S. You can join at any time. There are benefits to being members, but you never have to join. It's really up to you. You just pay a different fee when you come out, and it's a per map fee. This is basically a beginner's area. The park isn't really um, that great for what we call competitive orienteering, um, but it's a perfect place to learn about orienteering. So we have a series of different places like that within the club where we'll host, like Valley Forge Park. We used to hold events there. We don't anymore, but in areas like this, you can see things in a distance, and people that are kind of unfamiliar with being out in the woods or whatever are more comfortable here where they can see in distances. There's not a lot of deep woods to get worried about getting lost or we call it misoriented. And then also uh, we're commemorating one of the club members who made this map and made a map out in Warwick in, in Chester County. Him and his son made it years ago. He was a chemistry professor at Villanova. He passed away during COVID so we're here to kind of commemorate the work he did and to dedicate this new map to him. Outside of normal this this COVID time period prior to that we were hosting you know 40 events a year uh, and then we do a lot of side programs through the educational services where we do programs for schools and and different other activities for parks um, you know so if you're camping at French Creek in July in the evening you can come to one of our presentations and learn about orienteering.